I'm so blitz. Kenny, I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make little kids underwear just like this, little briefs. Um, there's also an option to make them into boxer briefs if that's something you're looking for. This is a pattern by um, Peekaboo Pattern Shop. I'll put a link down below for it where you can go get it. I believe it's like $5, um, but super quick, easy project and a great way to use your scraps. So I'm excited to show you guys how to do this and get a bunch of these made. Now I'm going to be using the Baby Lock Brilliant, which is this machine back here. If you've seen any of my other tutorials, you know I love this machine. It is a great everyday use machine for so many different things. I love, love, love this machine. Um, I'm doing tutorials on all the different machines that I have and the features on them. So make sure if you're interested in a new machine to go and check those out. I'll put links down below to the videos and to um, where you can find out more information about them on the Baby Lock website. Those links will be down in the description. So to get started on our little underwear, boxer briefs or briefs, um, the things that you're going to need are your fabric. And like I said before, this is a great project for using all of your scraps. So just small amounts. This size is a 2T, so I am making the smaller size, but really you're not gonna be needing a ton of fabric no matter what size you're doing. So I did use two different fabrics. Um, they're just contrasting fabrics. And again, on this tutorial, I'm gonna be using this fabric. And then I also have this, which I actually made some leggings out of. So I'm gonna be using the wrong side of this fabric for the binding for this. So just kind of a fun way to use up any scrap fabrics that you have um, out. Other than fabric, you're just gonna need um, basic sewing supplies and the pattern. So let's get started. Once you have everything cut out, make sure you have all of your like binding pieces, your waistband piece, your legband pieces cut out as well as like the front and the back pieces. Um, I feel like that took the longest for me. Making it is super quick. It's just getting things, all the things cut out and figuring out which pieces you need can take a little bit longer. But for these briefs that we're making, I just needed a front and a back because I'm going to be doing the functional fly binding. I'm not going to be doing the faux fly. So that's a mouthful. So if you're doing um, a functional one, you're going to need two of these pieces and you cut them on the dotted line. And if you're just doing a faux one, you just need one of these pieces. So just keep an eye on that. There's a chart that shows you all the different things that you're going um, to need to cut out, all the binding pieces, the waistband, leggings, all that stuff. So just look at that. But once you have all your pieces cut out, our next step is going to be taking our waistband piece and we're gonna put it right sides together. So I'm taking right sides together and I'm gonna sew down the short edge right here and I'm going to do the same thing on my leg binding pieces. So I'm just taking them and sewing down right here. Our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So since we're using the Baby Lock Brilliant and some knit fabric, which is stretchy, you want to make sure you're using stitches that stretch as well. A straight stitch will usually pop if you stretch it um, or break as you stretch it. So we want to use something that's not going to break. And there are stretch stitches that you can use, or I like to just use a normal zigzag stitch. So I just come over here to this panel over here and I click number five. You can change the width of the stitches and then also the length of the stitches. I'm gonna make them just a tad bit longer and a tad bigger. So again, like I said, I'm putting right sides together and sewing at a quarter of an inch. I love how it even shows you exactly where to line that up for a quarter of an inch. After we have those sewn, next we're gonna take our um, other four pieces, so the smaller of our binding pieces, and we're gonna do this to all of them. So I'm over at my iron, and I'm gonna take it and fold it in a quarter of an inch on the long edges for every piece. So I'm just gonna iron that in place. And then fold this other edge over and we're folding it to the wrong side and iron that in place. So then it'll just be nicely ironed and ready for us to use. And it's just gonna make it so much easier for us. 
And if you want, you can measure out a quarter of an inch or just eyeball it like I just did, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. So now I'm gonna do the rest of those pieces. After you have those four pieces ironed and ready to go, next we're gonna pin some of them to um, this front fly piece. So I am, like I said before, I'm making the functional fly. If you're making the faux fly, it's gonna be a little different. Um, but I'm gonna take these bigger pieces. They're a little bit wider and longer than my other ones. There you can see a difference. So I'm gonna take it and over here on each of these two um, fly pieces, you should have cut out on that dotted line. So that's where we're gonna place this piece now. I'm gonna go over to the wrong side and I'm gonna take my piece and open it up where I just ironed. So now I have that crease line to follow and kind of be my guide when I stitch. But I'm gonna take this binding piece and lay it right side to the wrong side. So I'm just gonna line it up with this top piece, this top part of the curve. And then I'm going to kind of manipulate it and curve it down. You might have to stretch it a little bit to then fit into this curve right here. And with some fabrics, you might even have a little bit extra sticking off. That's okay. Mine's gonna have a little bit extra. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna do it the same time as I do this one too. So I don't have to come back, so I'm gonna take this other piece that I have, the long one, to the wrong side of the front of this, the right of the binding side, and just pin along that curve. I'm gonna take that over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew at a quarter of an inch right along that edge. And we're sewing right on top of that fold that we just did. So I can just start sewing. I'm going to back stitch and sew down that curve. Now, with those curves sewn, you can take that piece and fold it. It should just fold nicely because you ironed it and it's gonna fold over and we're gonna lay it on top of the stitching that we just made and that seam. So it should lay just like that. I'm actually gonna pin that in place and then we're gonna actually stitch on top of that. Since we're just gonna do a top stitch on this, I'm actually gonna come over here and put my needle back in the center spot, so in number three, and just do a straight stitch down the side and just line that up with my binding and so long I will back stitch at the beginning and the end. And now I'm going to do that to the other piece as well both of those pieces sewn and now I'm going to lay one on top of the other and the right sides are up on both pieces this is just going to line things up um, so we can baste it together so I'm going to pin this short edge right here and then go over to this side and pin that one lined up with the corner and then go down to the bottom and pin the bottom. So now I can take it and we're gonna do some basting on this. For our basting, we stay on our straight stitch. I have mine in the middle, so that's number three. Um, and to do basting, you just want the longer stitch. So I'm gonna take the length up, press the plus, button and I'm going to take it up to a five 
And then I'm gonna take my piece and I'll just stitch the short side right here and right here. And then we'll go down to the bottom and stitch that. This is just gonna hold it in place for us until it gets all the way sewn together. And I'm just gonna do a little less than a quarter of an inch for my seam allowance. No back stitching. This is just a really quick stitch. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm thinking I'm gonna do it from this side so I can see where this is placed. And I'm just gonna do the long edge up to my binding. Right about there. Okay, right, and I'll cut that. And then go to the other side and do the same thing. Just gotta watch how that's lined up. There we go. I'm just going to go up to the binding and then stop. Okay, so now it's basted together. Not fully sewn, just basted. With that piece basted and ready to go, we're going to take our back piece and I'm going to line the short edge right here on either side. I'm going to line that up with our edge of our back piece. So I can take that and pin that in place right there. And then do the same thing on this side. So it's going to fold over because that's just going to come around to the front of the body. So when you're sewing, make sure you're just sewing through this fabric and nothing extra. So it'll end up sitting like that. So let's go over and sew that real quick. Sew it. I'm gonna take it back to my zigzag stitch. I'm just gonna leave it how it is. I'm not gonna make it bigger or smaller. And I'm just gonna go where I pinned it. Go at a quarter of an inch and stitch. Make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and end. sewn those seams we're going to flip it right sides out make sure everything is looking good so far and it is it looks really nice so I'm actually just going to trim off this excess part right here it's going past the seam allowance so I'm just gonna trim that put it off in the trash trim that one a little bit okay Next, we're gonna take our final little pieces, final little binding pieces, and we're actually just gonna lay them right on top of the seam. And this is optional, so you don't have to do it. I just like the look of it. It kind of makes it more like uniform. And I'm just gonna put that right on top and pin it in place. Uh, don't like that needle. <laughs> So with it pinned, oh goodness. So with that pinned in place, I'm gonna do the other one, same exact thing, and then we'll take it over and actually sew that down. To sew this in place, I'm gonna do what I did before because it's basically a top stitch. I'm gonna press my number three so it's a straight stitch again. And then I'm just going to sew along either edge of that binding piece. So I'm gonna go right up to the edge of it and I'll start sewing. And then I can go over to the other side and do the same thing. Our next step is going to be taking it and putting it right sides to the inside. 
And then we're gonna line up this front piece with the back piece right at the bottom, lined up right there, and I'm gonna pin that in place. And then I'll just take this over to the machine really quick, and I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch right across here at a quarter of an inch, making sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now we have pretty much underwear, but we're just needing to finish off our legs and our waistband. So to finish off the legs, I'm gonna do them a little different than I usually would um, in something, say shorts or um, a band like this. And I'm gonna do it like how we did this binding up here. So that way, the seam allowance here is covered and it's not irritating to whoever is wearing it. So I'm going to iron my piece a quarter inch over so that both sides come in just like we did on the binding pieces. And I'll do that to both of my leg pieces really quick. So like I did before, I'm going to take my piece and I'm gonna take this seam and actually line it up with the bottom first. You can divide this into quarters um, and then divide your leg band into quarters. But I feel like it, with it being so small, it's easier for me just to like stretch it with my fingers and do it that way than to actually try and divide it, if that makes sense. So I am putting wrong side to the right side of this leg band piece. So the wrong side of the underwear to the right side of the leg band. I'm stretching it to fit. I'm just gonna line up that edge and then go sew it. Okay, so we are using a zigzag stitch for this so that it will stretch around the leg. And I'm just gonna place mine in there at a quarter of an inch and start sewing. I am sewing on top of the underwear and not the leg binding. You can figure out whatever feels more comfortable to you. Just make sure you're only stitching through those layers and not getting any other part of the underwear caught in it. Once you have both those leg bands put on, we're gonna flip it right sides out. So then we can flip the leg band, pull those both out. Okay, so we pull those out and then fold it on that folded edge and then over again on top of the stitching that we just did. And then I like to go around and pin it so it stays in place and then it's ready for me to sew down. Just like before, when we stitched our other binding down, I'm gonna take it and do a straight stitch because we're just doing the top stitching on this and go right to the edge that we just folded over. I'm gonna go close to it and then I'll just stitch all the way around. I am stretching as I stitch and I'm back stitching. Make sure that you're not catching any other pieces other than what you are supposed to be sewing. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now, especially when it's so small like this. Just sew all the way around in the circle. Once you have both of your leg holes finished um, and that top stitching done, our final step is going to be our waistband. And we already sewed this shorter edge together so now all we have to do is open it up and flip it so the wrong sides are together. I'm gonna open up this seam so it's not adding more bulk in there. You could even iron it. You might need to, there we go. Okay, so I'm just putting it right sides together, folding it. 
Okay, so I'm just putting it wrong sides together, folding it in half. You can pin it if you need to. Some fabric, it's a lot trickier to keep this way. But once you have it folded in half, we're then going to put it on the underwear. So you just slide it over the top. And I like to put the seam on the side or the back. I think for this one, I'm going to put it in the back because it's a little bit bulkier than my other ones. And again, just like the leg holes, you can divide it into fourths and then divide your waistband into fourths and line those up so that way you're getting an equal stretch. With it being a smaller size, I don't really care to do that. I will do it in half. So... There's half of my waistband, and then I'll just come to the front and find the middle of the front, which is about there, and line that up. So now I can take it over to the sewing machine and stitch that down. And I'm just gonna make sure all these raw edges are all lined up because we want those to be stitched together. You are gonna stretch your waistband as you sew it down. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. For this step, you definitely wanna make sure you have it on a zigzag stitch because it will be stretching around the body every time it's worn. And now I'm just gonna start in the back right where I pinned it. And lay that down at a quarter of an inch and start sewing and back stitch continue along again like I said make sure you're stretching your waistband you don't need to stretch the underwear so that can be kind of tricky just try and try and just stretch the waistband and once you've put that waistband in you're all done with your little underwear little briefs whatever you call them you are all done. I love how quick and easy this project was. Um, I love that it used all my scraps. So it's kind of a fun thing. I never thought I would make underwear for my kids, but it was a fun little project to do. And they're actually really excited about it to get like character underwear. Next up, they want Batman. So we'll see what I can create for them. Um, but thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Again, I'll leave links for the Baby Lock Brilliant, all the other videos that I've done. I'll leave it down below in the description. So make sure you go and check that out and make sure you check out this awesome machine. It really is one of my favorite machines I've used. Also make sure to hit that thumbs up button and to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.